Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. So in case you haven't seen it yet, Webflow have just sent out an email and in that email, it links to a blog post that's speaking about um, accessibility and the lack thereof that um, Webflow as a platform is not addressing. And this is exactly why this, why this series exists and why I was passionate enough to talk about it is because accessibility, accessibility as it stands isn't currently being addressed by Webflow. Um, and what's happening is a lot of websites are coming out and they're malformed and they're not adhering to web standards, which is essentially why the, why the web has existed for so long is because we're adhering to web standards and websites that were created 10 years ago still work as they should today because of those web standards and they're, they're websites that work across so many different kinds of users, whether that's disabled or abled or, or whatever, different conditions, different devices, all these things um, we need to take into account when building a website. And unfortunately, as easy as Webflow is to use, um, it doesn't quite cater for all these use cases. The good news is, according to this blog post, uh, Webflow are looking to address all these things. I'm excited to see what they do. They've even um, admitted their buttons on, there isn't enough contrast ratio on some of the default components, which is great. Um, mouse um, interactivity is going to be a big thing as well in some of their default components. So it's going to be really exciting to see what they do there. And I guess it's important to remember that accessibility isn't necessarily just for disabled users. In fact, it, it's for accessibility is kind of for everyone. And there's a, there's a, there's a huge um, commonality and a huge um, association with search engine optimization, accessibility, and a, a functioning website. So if, if, if you pay a lot of attention to accessibility, you're often building a website that's search engine friendly as well. So as I say, uh, the, the blog post looks really promising. They're gonna be hiring some experts in accessibility, which is really good, and they're gonna to bring to it, um, and they're gonna start just, just building with accessibility in mind. The one thing I do suggest they do is update some of the documentation. Uh, for instance, I, I, I looked at the form documentation and it suggested that you can just delete a form label. You can't just delete a form label. Every form element needs a label from an accessibility standpoint. It also could go on to describe how if you're gonna create elements and you create fields and how you associate those things, which is an idea for another video I've just had. So I think that they can, re the, the, the low hanging fruit here is update their documentation to start saying um, and advising how people should do things. Yes, it might, um, it, you know, the documentation will, will be a bit longer to read and a bit more tricky to understand, but people do read it and people love the documentation. They love their videos. So um, it's a great place and an easy place to get started. So if you haven't read the announcement yet, um, I'll link it below in the description and have a read. Um, like I say, it's, it, from a fundamental, this is why this video series exists because of the um, accessibility and the functionality of Webflow just isn't quite there yet. So again, I'm excited to, to see where this goes. And until next time, happy no coding.